Welcome again. Uh, so in the previous lecture, we have seen uh, how to create simple state charts using some events to trigger transitions between two different states. And we have also seen how to use uh, variables defined in the interface of the state chart. And finally, we have used timed events. Uh, for example, here, every one second do something. So now let's uh, go further with this example and add more, some more sophisticated uh, event-based behavior to this, um, to this state chart. More in particular, what we would like to do now is to have a clock in which we can not only display something, but we can also modify the values of the, of the clock, of the clock uh, variables like the hour or the seconds of the clock. So to do this, I will add two new states, a first state to modify the hour and a second state to modify the seconds. Uh, let's call it reset seconds. I will explain the difference in terminology straight away. Uh, again, as always, we see a red cross to indicate that there's something wrong. What's wrong here is that both states are not reachable. So to make them reachable, we will link them to existing states uh, here and here. And then another thing here is that we have to specify what type of transition is this. So now let's extend the behavior of the clock to make it a two button clock. So I've already added here uh, a second event, which is set. So the clock has two buttons, the mode button and the set button. The set button will allow uh, to trigger another type of event. So here, if we uh, if I add here set as uh, event that this set will trigger, trigger transition from display hour to set hour while mode triggers the transition from display hour to display seconds. Okay, so now the idea is that in set hour we, we should be able to modify the hour of the clock. And to do this, I will add another transition from set hour to itself. Uh, which will be triggered by uh, an, an event, an event which is one of the two incoming events that we have. Uh, so here we will again use one of the two one of the two events, namely the mode event, to be able to modify the hour. And here, every time I click on mode, I would like that the clock, the clock's time, is increased by one hour. So, since the time variable represents the hour in seconds, this means that I have to add to the existing, the current time, uh, 3600 seconds, since uh, one hour is 60 minutes times 60 seconds. 60, 60 times 60 seconds. So, like this, I will increment the hour. Well, actually, I'm cheating because I'm, increment, inc I'm incrementing the time, and because I'm incrementing the time value, the hour will be modified uh, every time the time value is updated through this internal loop. So now let me add the behavior for the reset seconds state. So this will be similar as for set hour, but a little bit more simple. So to start with, I have to specify the event to allow me to go from display seconds to reset seconds. And then I have to specify what to do in reset seconds. So here I will do it uh, differently than from what I did in set hour, rather than having an external transition that is based on the mode event to modify the seconds, I will simply and directly uh, reset the seconds to zero whenever we enter the reset second state. So how do we reset the seconds to zero? Uh, well, we could simply set a variable sec seconds equal to zero, but remember that seconds is calculated in function of time, so in fact we need to modify the time variable. So uh, we will modify the time variable by decrementing it uh, from its current value, the value of seconds, and this will have as effect of uh, putting the seconds to zero. Uh, so like this, uh, effectively when we enter the reset second state directly when we enter because of the entry action 
the seconds will be reinitialized to zero. Uh, now the last step to do is we of course should go be able to go back from reset seconds to display seconds. So we also have to add a transition back from here to here. And uh, here let's make this an automatic transition. So in UML it would be sufficient to just put this. Uh, in uh, Yakindo, because it's a discrete piston file, when we are going to do transition, so we can uh, say this in two different ways. As you can see, when you click on uh, on this uh, on this sign, uh, it will say that either you can specify on cycle, which means that whenever on every cycle you you can, you should go back to display seconds, or uh, you can also simply specify always go back to display seconds. So by doing this, uh, we will uh, return to display seconds whenever we have done the action, the entry action in reset seconds. So that's uh, basically the behavior we want to specify. So let's now run the simulation to see if everything works as planned. Okay, so we start in display hour. Let's first maybe test the reset seconds behavior. So we do first mode to go to the display seconds state. And then here we see currently seconds is counting up upwards from 12 onwards. Uh, whenever I go to the set, uh, I do reset seconds. And automatically I return to display seconds. And indeed we see that the seconds have been reanalyzed to zero. And we start all over again. Maybe show this again one more time because it could have been a little bit quick. So let's do set, and then here we see again, we go back to one second and start counting again. Uh, to see the behavior of the set hour uh, state, so let me first go to set hour by following the set uh, transition. So I trigger the set event, I go to set hour, and when I now click on mode, I will start incrementing the value of hour, modulo 24 of course. So if I do this once again, the value is again increased by one, and like this, every time you click on mode, we increase by uh, one hour, uh, and here after five seconds, automatically we go back to the display hour state because of this uh, triggered time event after five seconds. So with this, we have our really more complex uh, behavior of a clock in which we have two display states and two uh, set states.